Praise the Lord, brethren, and welcome to today's teaching. My name is Robert Muando, and I am delighted to bring to you the Word of God. Today, I am inspired to start my sharing with a declaration of portions from the Psalms. The first Psalm is Psalm 119 and verse 105. And the reading from the NIV version says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The second declaration is from Psalm 19, verse 7 to 11. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right giving joy to the heart. The commands, the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold, they are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. We have spoken about the prophetic voice in times of crisis. And at the start of uh, the week we have just ended, a video of a member of one of the well-known Christian fellowships in Uganda went viral following his claims that his leader operates in a higher prophetic anointing than the prophets of old, like Abraham, Elijah, Elisha, Moses, and even the New Testament apostles. In this time of crisis, the Church of Christ ought to pull closer together than becoming polarized, let alone from within. While pondering over this, I was deeply convicted by the Spirit of God that the problem was incubated from within the church and now has hatched into a fully grown concern. The lack of proper teaching in the Church of Christ concerning spiritual gifts has graduated into our systems, self-made pastors, apostles, evangelists, teachers, and prophets. Hard as they may try not to, many often find themselves in error because they were spiritual orphans turned into self-made spiritual parents. They answer to nobody, and even if they recognize their error, they couldn't possibly shoot themselves in the foot. They are bigger than anyone, and sadly now wanting to overshadow even their master, Jesus Christ. That is if indeed Christ is still their master. In my convictions today, I choose to shed more light on the prophetic ministry. In Acts chapter 2, from verses 17 to 20, we read, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your older men shall dream dreams. And verse 20 says, Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now, if we look at that scripture, it says all flesh. That means that all are called to prophesy and function in the gifts of the Spirit. All men, not just prophets. Not just men, but also women. Not just adults, but also children. And not just Israel, but also all the nations. There's not just a special category of people and a special kind of prophet. Scripture clearly says all. What this really means is that the prophetic ministry is indeed God's gift to his church 
and the means by which God guides his people in knowing him, following his precepts, and serving him. But there is a danger here. If we say all, then who should we listen to? Who should we follow? I indulge you to follow me in this teaching and all these questions will be addressed as we study scripture both in the Old and the New Testaments. Let me hasten to add and acknowledge that in this sharing I will use uh, the work of Mike, Mike Biko uh, of International House of Prayer as part of my teaching. This teaching on the prophetic ministry, I believe, is very relevant in our time and most needed for the Church of Christ at such a time as this. What is prophecy? Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus and is the revelation of what is on his heart for his people. We see that in Revelations chapter 19 verse 10. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Most prophecy is human words reporting something that God brings to mind. That is according to Wayne Grudem. And the spirit conveys to our minds thoughts that we communicate in a contemporary language. They are a mixture of God's words and man's words that combine divine inspiration with the human process. Some prophetic words may be 10% God's words and 90% man's word, while others have a greater revelatory content. Most prophecy has a strong mixture of man's ideas. The first rule of the prophetic ministry is that it must always honor the written word of God. The prophetic spirit can be manifested in different ways, some dramatic and some subtle. The dramatic ways include experiencing an open vision, angelic encounter, the audible voice of the Lord, or, the, in, or a prophetic dream. Prophecy is released in us most often by faint impressions given by the Spirit of God. Now, let me just talk to you about three levels of the prophetic ministry. There is the office of the prophet. The office of the prophet is where you have a prophet or a man called in this office where they have a track record in regularly prophesying with accuracy about the future. They regularly receive open visions, angelic visitations, God's audible voice, and detailed information such as names, dates, and futures, future events, and are used in the power, gifts of healing and miracles. They may give correction or direction to the body of Christ by going through the leadership team, through a structure. Let me add that all believers are called to prophesy. If we read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39, that will clearly state that. However, not all are prophets. Again, we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 29. Then we have the prophetic ministry. These receive helpful prophetic words on a regular basis and occasionally receive higher levels of revelation as a prophet. They see visions, they get angelic visitations, they hear God's audible voice and detailed information such as names and dates and future events with the power gifts. And then we have a level called simple prophecy. This is for edification, for exhortation, and comfort of people by giving them the prophetic impressions that they have received. Usually, these words are given in small group settings or in a ministry line instead of on a microphone. He who prophesies 
speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 3. Let me just break down those three key words. First word there is edification, which means building up people by giving confirmation that brings them hope or focus. A common way to do this is by giving them a scripture that has been important to them or by confirming their ministry calling. Say, somebody called to be an evangelist or a school teacher or a marketplace worker. The second word there is exhortation, which refers to calling people to persevere in their ministry calling or promises. And the third word is comfort. It speaks of giving God's perspective in a time of difficulty or uncertainty. Now, I want to bring the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament prophecy. And we will look at it in this way. A few or many. In the Old Testament, there were only a few prophets for Israel and thus the whole world. But with the outpouring of the Spirit, the gift of prophecy has been widely dispersed. In the Old Testament, there is prophetic concentration of a few prophets. In the New Testament, there is prophetic distribution of many. The second point I want to look at as we look at Old and New Testament is the aspect of 100% accuracy. The Old Testament ground rules for prophets was 100% accuracy was required upon the penalty of death. If you see in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 20, the New Testament requires the prophets to judge each other's words. And we read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29, and also in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. With several prophets in each geographic location, the same accuracy is not demanded in the New Testament with the safeguard of prophets judging one another's words. The scripture says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. Aspect number three, as we compare the two uh, dispensations, is prophesying by faith. Instead of prophesying only by direct revelation, we prophesy according to the measure of our faith. Thus, we might mix up God's ideas with our words and thoughts. The scripture there says that let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Romans chapter 12 verse 6. And then we look at the aspect of national leaders. In the Old Testament, prophets prophesied regularly to kings. Whereas most New Testament prophets spoke to believers rather than to the national leaders of their day. The next aspect that I want to address is the administrating of prophecy. There are three components of administering prophecy. Revelation, interpretation, and application. The Lord often uses a team of prophetic people to administrate prophetic revelation. Now let's look at revelation for a minute. Revelation refers to receiving the prophetic information or the impression or a dream or a vision. Apostle Paul in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 13 writes, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. The second aspect of administering prophecy is interpretation. This refers to understanding the, the revelatory information even with accurate revelation, it is easy to get a wrong interpretation of it. There are often symbolic elements to visions and dreams. Often, we do not understand 
the revelation until the circumstances unfold that bring its fulfillment. Some give into the temptation to manufacture the interpretation before it is clear. Ironically, some who are best at receiving a revelation seem worst at interpreting it. God said, Hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. That is in Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. And then the third aspect that I want to address here is the aspect of application. This refers to the wisdom to rightly apply information that is interpreted. And Mike Biko of uh, International House of Prayer Cancers recommends asking the following questions. We need to ask the question, who is supposed to share the prophetic word? Who is supposed to hear it? Is it the leaders, some individuals, the intercessors, or the whole church? How much of it is to be shared? 30% or 100%? And when should it be shared? And why should it be shared? What is the desired impact? The main question is, what will bring about the maximum amount of edification? Some important points to take note of as I conclude. Number one, the first rule of the prophetic ministry is that it must always honor the written word of God. Number two, prophecy must be for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Anything outside it is hearsay and divination. Number three, all believers are called to prophesy, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39. However, not all are prophets. Number four, let us prophesy by faith, in proportion to our faith, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 6. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That means we must not depart away from the written word of God. Number five, let us judge each other's words of prophecy. The scripture says, weigh carefully. And then the other scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, 21 says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Number six, certainly, most certainly, let our prophecy edify, exhort, and comfort men. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3. May God bless you.